G'day guys, Paul here from The Hook and The Cook. Welcome back to our channel. I'm in Lake Barumba today. Never fished it before. Um, after some Saratoga or maybe a bass. Let's see how we go. I've just seen something come up and absolutely go mental on the surface around this corner. Now, I don't know if I'm even going to be able to get around there. But it was uh, definitely a rather large fish. So I'm going to see if I can sneak in here without scratching the boat up too much. Still in 2.8 metres of water. Whatever the hell that was, that was a bloody big fish. Or a big, big something or other. Oh, there's a Saratoga right in front of me. Ah, oh, shit, I spooked him. Right in front of me, a, to a toga. Damn it. I just spooked him big time. He was a good sized Saratoga, too. That must have been what was splashing before. Well, I'm just going to sit here and be quiet for a while. Hopefully, he'll come back out. It's frog time, I think. Let's get the frog on. Come on, Freddo. Let's see how we go. Out to play the old toga. So guys, I'm right up in Saratoga territory at the moment. I'm hoping wanna come up and smash this frog. Green frog. Some big splashes at the back of me, but I'm just gonna give it a crack here. Let's see how we go. The good thing about these guys is that they don't get snagged up too much. This frog will just get all the weed off him. Just sits on top of the water like so. And you just twitch him along. You see his legs moving. And he's weedless because he's got the hooks at the top. So I'll just show you. So what happens is the Saratoga will crush down on this. That's the only way you can sort of fish this, um, these lily pads with weedless, weedless baits like this one. I've had a snake try and eat it once <laughs> at Lake McDonald. That was funny. Just want my Saratoga to bloody eat it. Well, guys, I've fished really hard today. Um, I've seen four Saratoga. Casted all sorts of things at them. They wouldn't have a bar of it today. Oh, long day. Anyway, I'm going to head back now and maybe go near Main Basin. I've seen a few bass on the sounder there, so I might have a crack for some bass down there. Hopefully get a fish, and we'll see how we go. Yeah, long day, long, long day. A thousand casts for absolutely nothing. But never mind. Um, it's been a beautiful day. I can't complain. It's better than working. That little guy. Oh, well. At least now I've found what they're eating. It's a nice little bass just taking this now. Slowly winding that back. Well, they're getting a little bit bigger. Barumba bass. They're known for really big bass in here. But he took that uh, as I was rolling it, slow rolling it. All right, guys, are finally onto a fish. Half asleep, just jigging this little jig up. I think he's a bass, I'd say. Yeah, he's a nice bass. There you go, guys. Beautiful bass. And this lure that I've got at the moment, I actually found it in a kingfish in Botany Bay. Can you believe that? 
and I uh, put a couple of hooks in him, a couple of stinger hooks, and uh, got him right on the top of the surface, this guy. So pretty happy with that. I'll get him in and give you a better look at him, hopefully. There you go guys, beautiful bass uh, with that little shrimp bait that I, uh, a little shrimp lure that I got out of a kingfish in Botany Bay, so that's worked again. I'm actually going to keep this bass, he's 36 centimetres, well legal. I'm in um, an impoundment here, which is uh, Barumba Dam. Now they do stock these fish that we can take two home to eat. I pay $50 a year, so I haven't got a problem with taking a fish out. Um, very rare that I take any fish home out of dams, um, but everyone keeps asking me what they taste like, so I'm going to try and find out. So I'll see you back at home guys, it's getting a bit late so I won't cook him up here, but I'll see you back at home and let's see what he tastes like. Well guys, that was a beautiful day on the water. It was a long day because I was trying to get one of those uh, Saratoga to bite, but anyway, I should have uh, come down into the main basin and got onto these bass. Um, but have a look at the kangaroos in the background, what a beautiful place this is. Absolutely beautiful. You'd be dead for quids, would you? I'll see you back at our place anyway, and we'll uh, cook up that bass. Well, guys, back from the uh, dam now, back at home. Had a good night's sleep last night. Just gonna, um, just gonna scale the fish now and gut it, and I'm gonna do a really quick cook up with it, and uh, let's see what it tastes like. I can't wait to taste the bass. i um, been waiting a long time for this, so let's give it a go. So here we go with the bass. We've got a, I've just brain spiked this bass and bled this fish. So I'm gonna actually gut it and fillet it. Uh, first thing I need to do is just turn the bass around. Just gonna come under here, under the anal fins. Come up slowly. Try not to puncture too much here. Okay, I don't really wanna puncture the gut. That's the last thing I need to do. Well, it's quite tough through here. Now I'm just gonna open that guy up. Just gonna pull out the actual gills here and then we're just going to use some scissors and we're just going to trim just on the gills there there we go and we're just going to pull these out and this now should take all the gut with it make sure all that's nice and free there we go and this guy's so fresh it's so slippery and we get all that out in one go as you can see okay now i'm just going to clean all that up now okay so now i'm just going to scale this guy now you gotta be really careful with bass. Just here on the gill rakers, just here, it is super sharp. I don't know if you can see that, but they've got like a razor edge sharp. Also, there's a really good spike here. So the best thing to do, grab yourself a tea towel, cover them up, and then just away we go. Now I've got my fancy little scaler today. I haven't got my uh, father-in-law's scaler. This is a Japanese scaler that a, a good mate of mine, Frank, gave to me. Um, these are absolutely fantastic as well. Um, so I did get all, I'm a little bit more prepared today, so I got everything from work today. And this really gets the scales off as well. The scales are coming off fairly easy on this bass, which is good. Just flip this other side over and we'll do that side as well. Okay, just gonna fillet this guy now. Make sure there's no, no scales on it, give him a bit of a dry off. What a great day I had out there, really enjoyed it. Just a shame I couldn't get a Saratoga. Well, at the end of the day, I can't eat Saratoga anyway. They're full of bones. You wouldn't want to eat them. Although, you know you know me, I'd probably give it a try. I've eaten carp and everything else. Okay, so just coming underneath both fins here, coming up into the head. So I just basically all trim straight through here. Okay. Right up into the top of the head there so we don't lose any meat. Just give your knife a wipe. Just turn it around and I'll try and do it this way so you can see what I'm doing. So turn, so come into the head and then turn your knife around. With the tip of the knife, just run down the backbone. Straight down the backbone, like so. And just long strokes with the knife. Releasing it there. Just releasing all that meat. Now if you come across a bone, just go around it. I'm gonna take my time showing you this. There was one bone just sticking up there. I think it's a lot harder to fill it when you're doing it slowly than it is doing it a little bit quicker. And I'm going to come across the rib cage here. Got to slice down the rib cage. So it saves me having to trim it out later. It'll be caught in a little bone, and that's it. Basically, there's one fillet straight off. 
And as you can see what I've done here, I've come around the rib cage. So there's absolutely no meat on that rib cage there, it's just all bone. So I just come up and around and then take it off there. And what that does is just leaves me with a really nice fillet. I'll trim that up in a second. Then we just got to take the second side off. Now the second side's always a little bit trickier than the first side. Make sure you, your board is all clean. Um, there's nothing worse than protein on the knife to dull the edge. Now it is the hardest part is taking the second side off because it's it's not quite as bowed, it's, it's a lot flatter. So it's always a little bit more difficult. So again, taking this second fin, holding these fins up and looking at the natural line that we're given up towards the head here. And then we can just turn that around. I'll just show you this way so you can see it. Come down the back down again. All the way down to the tail. Wipe the knife again, making sure you've got no protein on there. And come slowly down yet again. Now some people break through the, the actual rib bones. I much prefer to go round them. It is a little bit harder to do. And I normally take this tail bit here up to the rib bones and then as you can see we've got the rib bones that come around so we just need to go around them try not to lose too much meat and then that's that completely off okay there you go nice fillet lovely now what we can do with this we could make a stock out of it probably be okay in a crab pot I'd say just turn that over or I could make a stock for a risotto if I was making a risotto that'll go in my freezer for when I do a fish stock all right now I'm just going to trim these fillets up a little bit see these fillets are nice and clean there's actually uh, no middle bones here which is fantastic I don't even need to pin bone them which is really good normally you're in the brim and the snapper you get a few little bones just hanging down here and there's no bones in these which is really good this is the first time like I said I've ever filleted a, um, a bass um, I actually probably don't even need to trim it up very much there's very little trimming to be done and um, that's what happens when you just take your time no need to rush and we're just going to trim some of this skin off here these fillets look really really nice to be honest I'm just going to trim the end just here get rid of a bit of that to square it off okay that's pretty good the only thing I'm going to do now is I might do a crispy skin and um, so just going to put a few little slits in here it's more for more for a little bit of presentation than it is for actually cooking process of it because this is a fairly thin fillet anyway so I'll put some slits in there do the same one same thing with this guy I'm gonna serve this really really simply and um, we're gonna serve that with um, like a really light soy glaze because it's been it with it being a um, with it being a fresh water fish what um, what I'm a bit worried about is probably not got a lot of a salty flavour, so I'm going to use the soya sauce as sort of a flavour enhancer. Put a little bit of sugar in there with it, and reduce that down. I'm going to serve that with ginger. Just put some ginger in that sauce as well. So it's just a ginger and soy sauce, and I've got some really nice um, Chinese vegetables, which is some uh, pad choy, some baby pad choy, and um, look, they're as clean as anything. How beautiful are they? Wow, a couple of beautiful fillets right there. The reason why I don't want to put too many flavours in there like garlics and stuff like that, I really want to get the taste of this um, of this lovely Australian bass. So what I'm going to do as well is just cut these in half. Just It's mainly for the, the presentation on the plate, so they don't look too big on the plate. And um, it always looks much nicer when you present it on the plate and it's a little bit smaller. All right, let's do it. First thing I've got to do is make our soy sauce dressing for the fish. Very simple, just a small pan because I'm only making it for just myself. I'm just going to put in four tablespoons of soy sauce. And what this soy sauce is, is a light Chinese soy sauce. There we go. And this one's from Torino. And uh, it is absolutely beautiful. You don't want it too strong, you just want it to be nice and light sugar going in here as well which we need to dissolve we've got some brown sugar you could use white sugar palm sugar whatever you want to use but I'm using um, brown sugar and just two teaspoons of this 
so two to one basically and we're just going to reduce that down I'm also going to put some ginger in there now so once the sugar starts to dissolve then I'm going to pop the ginger in what I'll do is just infuse our soy sauce so our ginger goes in lemon juice in so it's a quarter of a lemon just squeezed in you could lose lime juice but unfortunately I've got no limes at the moment limes are pretty good we're just going to bring that down now so it reduces so not too sticky of a, of a syrup but enough to coat the fish without it running all over the plate okay so this is the sort of consistency that I'm looking for where it's not too sticky but if you have a look at that now my fingers are used to getting a little bit burnt guys but don't go and stick your fingers in it but you see how it's just clinging to the spoon there and you can put a like a wiper a mark down the spoon like so then that's absolutely perfect okay before we can cook the fish the secret to a, a nice crispy skin fish is getting it really dry so what I do is I basically um, will leave this in the uh, just outdoors for a, you know only a couple of minutes with some paper underneath and paper on top then I remove the paper which keeps it really nice and dry but you can see that skin's really drying out that's what I want I put a little bit of olive oil on here now so some olive oil, obviously Torino olive oil, so good. And then we're going to put some sea salt on here. That also helps it to uh, to take the moisture out of the skin. Also blisters the skin very, very quickly when we put it into the pan. So by the time the pan's hot, this will just be perfect. So in with my fish. Sizzling nicely. Now these guys are curling up. Just put your fingers on top and that'll help the uh, skin caramelize up nicely. It'll just help relax. Generally I would start this in a cold pan but today there's a lot of wind. I normally cook my fish for about three quarters one side and then I flip it when it's just about ready. So the rest of my ingredients can go in here now. So what I've got here is some absolutely beautiful um, little baby pad choy. It's uh, like a Chinese sort of cabbage. So that can go in here with a little bit of the oil. Yeah, the fish is getting there, looks beautiful. Okay, so I'm just gonna put some chili in there now. Right, oh, guys, I think they're ready to plate up, beautiful. Skin's looking good, time to plate the fish. It looks really good. Let's hope it tastes as good as it looks, eh? That's it. Now I'm just gonna throw a little bit of uh, spring onion in there or shallots. This is going to go over the top. As you can see how beautiful and sticky that is. Wow, that looks great. Now, I better take this and eat this before the flies eat it. We've got a few flies there. So there we go, guys. I'm going to get this scoffed as fast as I can. And um, what do you think? Looks beautiful. I'm going to give it a good taste test now and we'll see how it is. So there we go guys, beautiful Australian bass. And we're so, I've just served that with a uh, soy and ginger dressing and some pad choy. So I'm going to taste it now, so proof's in the pudding. So let's see exactly how good this fish tastes. Maybe even give it a little bit of a squeeze of lemon juice as well, eh? Alright. You know it looks really good. I've got to admit, for a freshwater fish, this looks absolutely beautiful. Actually, it's really nice. I thought it'd be muddy, but it's really, really good. Really good. That uh, dressing definitely helps. I'm going to taste the skin as well. It's good. I'm blown away. It actually tastes really good. I mean, Probably not as good as ocean fish, but honestly, if someone served this up to me fresh, I don't know if I'd be able to tell the difference if it was, uh, you know. Yeah, no, it just tastes great. It tastes fantastic, I can't complain. Especially for a, a bass out of the dam. Really good, really good. Yeah. Anyway, guys, let me scoff this. Just gonna have one more piece. We'll see you next week, guys, somewhere on the water. 
Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to comment if you like this video. And we'll see you next week. Cheers, guys.